You're watching InfoSec Bytes, a crash course in information security for journalists. We're based at the Centre for Investigative Journalism in London and supported by the Logan Foundation. This is a tutorial on how to install and use Signal Private Messenger to do encrypted chat and make encrypted voice and video calls. This video is provided for information only. It cannot replace the advice of a trained security professional. If lives or safety depend on your security, please seek the advice of an expert. This is a video on how to install and use Signal on an Android smartphone. If you have an iPhone, instead, you can click or tap on the pop-up message and then choose the iPhone video to watch that. There is also an overview video explaining what Signal is and why you should use it, which you can access in the same way. We strongly recommend that you watch that video before this one, because it contains some important information that you need to know about before you start using Signal. If you want to keep watching this video, stay tuned. The phone numbers used during technical demonstrations in this tutorial do not belong to any individual. Their SIM cards were purchased with the sole purpose of recording these tutorials, and the accounts have since been deregistered and the SIMs discarded. The numbers are therefore no longer in operation and cannot be used to contact InfoSec Bytes. It's time to get hands-on with our smartphone and start installing Signal Private Messenger. From your phone's home screen, Tap the icon for the Google Play Store to open the store, or if the icon is not on your home screen, open the store in the way you normally do. In the search box, type in Signal Private Messenger and then press Search. The first option in the list should be Signal Private Messenger from Open Whisper Systems. Tap on the app to open the app's store page, where you can view details about it. From there, you can go ahead and press Install. A screen will open, showing you all the permissions at once. It needs a lot of permissions, but that's because this app has quite a lot of features, such as sending photographs and voice messages. We've included a link to an explanation of why Signal needs these permissions in the description below. Click it if you would like to know more before you install Signal. If you're satisfied, go ahead and scroll down and then press Accept. And then wait while the Play Store downloads Signal and then begins to install it. Once it's finished, the Signal icon should appear on your home screen. If it doesn't, it can be found in the App drawer. Tap on the Signal icon to start Signal. The first thing Signal asks you to do is to register your phone number. Let's just stop for a bit to discuss this step. Signal is asking for your phone number in much the same way that other messaging apps like WhatsApp do, in order to prove that you control that phone number. This is a protection against someone else signing up to use Signal with your phone number and impersonating you. When you enter the number, Signal sends an SMS text message to that number with a verification code, which you then type into Signal to prove that you own that phone number. Your phone number is then your identity while you use Signal. This means that anyone you communicate with using Signal knows your phone number. There are some issues with this. Whereas using your phone number may be fine for the general user, there may be some situations in your work as a journalist where you wish to communicate securely with someone without giving away your phone number. If you don't want to use your own phone number, there is a way to use Signal without doing so, but it's a bit complicated. You can buy a cheap burner phone and a prepay SIM card. Depending on the jurisdiction you live in, you may or may not have to register your details to buy a SIM. You can then use the phone number for your burner phone to register on your smartphone, and the verification code will be sent to the burner instead. On Android, you can't simply input the verification code into your smartphone. Instead, you have to wait until the countdown is finished, and then tap Call Me, and your burner phone will then receive a call. Once you answer, a robot voice will read out a new verification code. Tap this code into the app and press Verify, and from there on, Signal will be registered to the burner number and not your smartphone's actual phone number. You may want to keep the burner around in case you need to re-register Signal at a later date. We're going to avoid that complication in this tutorial and use the mobile phone's actual phone number. Type your phone number in here and then press Register. Double-check it's the correct number, and then press Continue. 
Now, wait while Signal sends you out a verification SMS. Signal can access your SMS messages, so it will automatically capture the SMS and read the code, and then go ahead and complete the registration itself. The next screen is the home screen of Signal. Up at the top, a banner will ask you if you want to make Signal your default SMS app. This would mean that besides sending encrypted messages, Signal would also be your normal text message app and could send unencrypted messages to contacts who don't have Signal. You may want this, but it sometimes confuses people, so we're going to say no to that and keep Signal as the encrypted messaging app and leave SMS messages to the phone's normal SMS app. It will also offer you the option of inviting your friends to Signal. This involves sending an unencrypted SMS to your contacts, inviting them to install Signal and including a link to Signal on their app store. This might be great if you're just a casual user of Signal, but you may not want to send lots of unencrypted messages notifying everyone you are using Signal, so we're going to say no to that too. Back to the Signal home screen. When you have conversations, they will appear as a list on this screen. If you tap the Compose icon, you will see a list of your contacts who are already using Signal. Your contacts for Signal must be saved in your address book on the phone for them to appear here. Signal will automatically read your contacts list and it will work out which of your contacts are already using Signal. If you've just gotten someone else to install Signal and they haven't yet appeared on this list, tap the three dots at the top right and tap Refresh to refresh the list of contacts and then they should appear. To message someone, tap their name in this list and a message window will open just like with a regular messaging app. Now you can type them a message and press send. You will notice a padlock icon at the bottom right of the message. This tells you that the message has been encrypted. A tick will appear once the message has been sent and another will appear when it has been delivered. On Signal, unlike with WhatsApp's blue ticks, there is no way to know if or when the message is read. When your contact texts you back, their messages will appear in line. You can proceed to chat with Signal the same way you chat with any other messaging app. Signal has a special concept called safety numbers. This lets you be certain that you are talking directly to your contact's device. To use it, while you're in the messaging window, tap the three dots and then tap Conversation Settings. From there, tap Verify Safety Numbers. Get your contact to do the same thing. Your phones will display QR codes accompanied by a block of numbers. The numbers should be the same on both screens. If it's the same, that means that nobody is intercepting your signal conversation. If you're not in the same place as your contact, you could authenticate by comparing the block of numbers using a different means of communication, not signal. For instance, via a trusted intermediary. You may wish to share only a part of the number and have your contact share a different part of the number with you. If they check out, all is good. But if you and your contact are in the same place, it's much easier. With your phone, tap the QR code to turn on the camera and hold your phone over your contact's phone to scan their QR code. Then get them to do the same for you. The apps will tell you if the QR codes for your safety numbers check out. Once you've verified each other's safety numbers, as long as the safety numbers don't change, you know that you're talking to your friend. Safety numbers should only change if your friend gets a new phone or has to uninstall and then reinstall Signal. You can send emoji on Signal using the emoji button to the left of the text entry field. The tiny camera icon to the right of the text field allows you to snap a photograph from Signal and send that to your contact. To the right of that is a tiny microphone icon. You can use this to record a brief voice message and send that to your contact which they can then listen to later. And to the right of that again is a paperclip icon. Tap this to see a list of media you can attach to your message and send to your contact. It currently supports images from your photo gallery or audio files, any other kind of file from your phone's storage, contacts from your address book, your location using Google Maps, and an animated GIF library powered by Giphy. Signal also has a feature to let you send messages that disappear a set amount of time after your contact reads them. Press the three dots and tap Disappearing Messages to enable this feature. On this screen, you can slide up and down to choose how long your messages will last before they are deleted. 
we will choose 5 seconds. As you can see, when you send a message, it will appear for 5 seconds and a tiny hourglass icon will slowly count down the time and then it will disappear. The same happens when a contact sends a message to you. It's worth mentioning that even though the message disappears, this is no guarantee that the person you are communicating with hasn't taken a photograph of the message or recorded it in some other way. You can turn off disappearing messages by pressing the clock icon at the top and dragging it to off. You are not limited to chatting with a single person over Signal. You can also have group chats containing several of your contacts, all of which are fully end-to-end -end encrypted. From the Contacts List window, press the three dots and press New Group. From the Group Setup window, type in the name of your new group and tap the plus to start adding contacts to the group. When you're finished, tap the tick to start the group, and then you can start chatting in the same way as you would with an individual contact. The names of your contacts will appear beside each of their messages. Signal also lets you call your contact so you can chat on the phone or chat face-to-face -face using video chat, and all of this is also end-to-end -end encrypted. To call your contact, tap on the phone icon here. A screen will appear showing the call connecting and then ringing. Just wait for your contact to answer. Or if your contact is calling you, the caller screen looks like this. Swipe this icon to the right to answer. Once the call is connected, a bell sounds to tell you that you can speak. There are also some buttons on the call screen. This one puts your caller on loudspeaker so you can talk hands-free. This one puts the call on mute so you can speak without your caller hearing you. And this one turns on your front-facing camera to start your end of a video call. If you press this, your contact will be able to see you, but you won't see them until they press the same button on their side. Use the same button again to turn off your camera. You can hang up by pressing the red button here. It's important to remember, all of Signal's communications are sent over the data channel, so make sure you have a good data connection to use Signal, especially if you are having trouble with voice or video calls. Signal will periodically update and may add new features or fix bugs in the software. If you see an update notification for Signal, do update it as soon as you can, because updates for security software are important. There's plenty more to say about Signal, but now that you're up and running with Signal and your texts and calls are end-to-end -end encrypted, that's it for this tutorial on Signal for Android. If you want to watch the Signal for iPhone tutorial, or if you'd like to watch the overview video on what Signal is and why you should use it, click or tap on the pop-up message and choose your video now. Thanks for watching InfoSec Bytes. If you found this video useful, please share it widely with your colleagues and coworkers. To support the Centre for Investigative Journalism with a donation, please visit tcij.org forward slash donate. And if you would like to watch our other videos, please go to infosecbytes.org or subscribe to our channel below.